Do I have to stop sure. you now? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. I'm your host, Chris Peters, and I have my co-host, Green Mays, here, and we've got Cheryl, Rick, and Carl, and we're going to have some more guests in a couple and throughout the show. But tonight, we're talking about surrounding yourself with positive people. And I know that for myself, uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these wonderful people that come on the show every week and inspire me to keep going, providing valuable content and to keep it fresh and interesting for people. So, guys, give me your thoughts on how you've surrounded yourself with positive people. Anybody I can start. Don't matter. Go ahead, Cream. I can say I'm doing that right now with four individuals. I won't give it away exactly what I'm doing, but I think you can pick it up. But yeah, seriously, I, that's part of the power hour because there's a lot of people who will pull you down and say that what you want to do is not possible. If we can pull young entrepreneurs to the other side and say, look, we're working on it, and if we're doing it, you can do it, that's going to be a big motivation. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you guys feel, Cheryl and Rick and Carl, whoever wants to chime in? That's a major thing in anybody's world is how they start their day. Yeah. Because if they don't start it off in a motivated sense, who knows where it's going to go. Yeah. And if you don't hang around people that bring you to that level, then how are you ever going to vibrate at the, at the vibrational level you need to be at? Absolutely, Carl. Yeah. Your day has to start off with a positive vibration, with a bunch of motivation. Because if it don't, it's just going to slowly digress as day goes on. Yep. The energy level will. So personally, I get up, and the first thing I think about is I want to feed my mind some positive energy before I even do anything at all. Because if I even talk to anybody, I'm going to have to come across in a wrong way. Yep. Hey. Hi, everybody. Francis. Hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. We're at. We're just discussing uh, surrounding yourself with positive people and the importance of that. That's tonight's topic. And Carl was going into how he starts his day by feeding his mind with positive energy, so he stays motivated throughout the day. And so, uh, a young lady, young lady that Francis and I and perhaps Kareem knows, uh, Janet Legia starts my day most every morning, and I can feel the difference on the days that. There's no morning motivator. I can feel the vibrational difference. It's a whole different area because I don't vibrate at the same level. The only way I do is if I say, well, I'm going to go in and listen to what she shared during the week on a meditation or, on, on, or what have you that brings you to that level. Because there's days like Saturday and Sunday and Monday. It's like, oh, man, by the time I get to Tuesday, I'm... I just can't wait to get on the morning motivated because I just got to feel the people that are vibrating at that level that I want to be at. That's, that's where cool. I'm, that's my, that's my takes. That's very cool, Carl. That's the way I feel about the Entrepreneur Power Hour. Well, thank you. We appreciate yes. it. Yes. And we can't see you, young lady. If you're, we can't see you. Oh, uh, well, it's a bad hair day, but. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> I'm having one, but... <laughs> yeah, but we're men. We don't care, right? Women are a little bit more uh, reserved in that sense, so that's cool. Can't look any worse than mine, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's Doug. I spent all my hair to be on this show. I don't want to hear any... any... Um, all right. I, I... Hey, David HP. Wow. I'll take it. The end of the hour. There we go. Sure, man. It's the energy you bring, guys. Hey, buddy. Okay. Um. All right. Calls over. I can go now. So, thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. It was a good show. I learned a lot. I don't know what I learned, but I learned a lot of it. <laughs> no, 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 David. We want you to bring it, bring it, yeah. bring it. All so, right, you guys. David, uh, tonight's topic is surrounding yourself. Oh, oh, I know, man. I know. <laughs> I had to pop in here quick. Okay, All right, cool. you guys. So here, here it is. Right from the follow your bliss guy. Here it is. <laughs> All right. 
one of the biggest lessons I learned about surrounding myself with positive people was that I had to be the positive person first. That's right. Mm -hmm. I had to actually reach down into myself and ask myself this one question: Would I want to be in biz? Would I want to be in partnership in a business with myself? Oh. Am I somebody I'd want to hang out with? And when I first asked that question, man, did I want to go stick my head in the sand? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Right? No. I mean, that was that was like that was a little embarrassing at first, you know. Uh, and then I I started saying, well, well, why is that, you know? And mm -hmm. and I and I realized that most of my life revolved around complaining about all the things I didn't want in my life, including people. And the more I complained about it, the more I felt bad about it, and the, and the, the worse it got. It's like it never got better. And then somebody, then one of my mentors taught me this one lesson was that you, you cannot change, make a change in any area of your life using the same thinking that got you in the place you didn't want to be. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it was like, well, how in the world do I stop being negative? How do I stop that negative feeling? How do I, well, I had to stop complaining. Yeah. I had to make a conscious decision to stop complaining, to stop Absolutely. whining about yeah, what I didn't have. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you agree. got to look for the silver lining in every cloud, or all you're going to find is complaints. That's right. Yeah, right on, right on. Yeah. So, you know. What do you want to board or something over there, David? What's that? <laughs> oh, oh I'm rocking in my I'm <laughs> rocking in my office chair. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things Woo! to do. Yeah, it's Yay! one of my very favorite things to do. And I'm and I'm on my phone tonight rather than sitting on my stationary camera. So you guys are rocking with me. <laughs> He's so positive he can't sit still. There you go. <laughs> There usually, um, when I'm on a call, you guys usually I'm pacing my apartment. <laughs> I've got literally, I got, I got a, I got a ring around the carpet here where you can see is my, my, um, my racetrack. Phone. <laughs> 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 Yeah. yeah. Right so Rick and Cheryl, I'm interested to hear from you guys, being that you've been married for 27 years. What is uh, you guys have surrounded yourself with many positive people? Because I know Rick is like me; he doesn't put up with any bullshit. So, uh, Rick, how, how have you been? How have you been feeling after meeting all these wonderful people you've met through, through Pay Me One Words and, and our show and other people you've worked with? Popcorn for everybody tonight. All cool. right. Refreshments are being served. Right on. So how do you guys feel about that, Rick and Cheryl? Good. Uh, hi, Cindy. I, oh, Cindy. We, we feel good in the people that we've met and having to hang out with them and work with them. It's been a real positive experience for us. Um, we generally stay with the positive experiences. If we don't have them, then, then it's easy. We just disconnect the phone. Or we log off the internet and delete you from our contact list. Is on control not delete wonderful? Yep. Yeah, I was and and whiny. my kids when they were younger, but it didn't work. Uh. Dottie didn't beat me up. Calgon didn't work, but control off delete works. <laughs> Good one, Francis. Yeah. Control off delete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I worked in a very competitive environment, you know, at, at work in surgery, and um, most of the, uh, a lot of the surgeons were overeducated, pompous, and pricks. To be honest with you, you know, they made a million dollars a year to put up with your shit. If you're not professional, and if you're not, they're not going to be want to be around you. Like this one surgeon, he, he go me like, you know what, you have really good jokes, he says, but you know, your technical uh, expertise in, in neurology ain't, isn't that great. I go, I don't like neuro. And he goes, well, you can come in the room anytime as long as you have good jokes and I'll show you what to do. So they would want to be around me. Like first I thought, like, I'm going to be really good at what I do. Well, they didn't really give a shit about that. All they gave a shit about was that they were around someone that sort of made them smile. And... Uh, like we had a guy in this show, uh, Chrysler. He told me yeah. it's not what you know, 
people feel a after you're gone. I mean, I keep yes. telling myself that, hitting myself over the head, right? It's not what you know. It's how you make people feel. You know, yeah. you know? like being a surfer, we always, uh, always say the best. Whoa, we're getting a lot of feedback from Ron's line. Yeah. Just got to mute. A, a Hi, Ron. How are you? Uh, doing well, doing well. How are you guys doing? Hey, Ron. Good. Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, this is my friend Ron Lester. And Ron, tonight we're just talking about how to surround yourself with positive people. It's kind of a mastermind group. It's an open discussion. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah but quite different from what uh, you did on the radio show with Korean. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, Rick and Cheryl, you guys were saying about, Rick, when you worked in the medical field, you had a lot of experience dealing with people. Um, and as a doctor, you said that it was quite a depressing place to work. How did you get yourself through that process? Um, I stayed really grounded, and uh, I I looked forward to you know going home with someone who loved me and had a kid at home and stuff like that. So, and I, I was really brainwashed in the in that that I was doing uh, good for humanity, though that really um, at the time and I. I I think there was like a percent of people that we helped and stuff. So, um, and the um, a progressive knowledge of doing all these different surgeries, like someday I do hip, you know, and then in the afternoon I, I would deliver a baby, and then I'd be on call in the evening and fix the kid's crushed leg. So the, the intellectual part of it kept me going, and seeing the families uh, take their, their kids home, in one piece, that sort of kept me going too. That's good. From the trauma part of it, you know. But that's all I sort of kept upbeat. And I, I, I really loved what I did. It was super challenging. Like you could come to work one day and think you're going to do some meaningful thing and you could be in a death dying act, you know, uh, trying to save someone's life within the next five minutes. And everything depended on you. So I really like that. You know, I really like being smashed against the wall and and uh, have all my talent and all my abilities being needed right now. You know, so um, I really enjoyed that. That's really what you know. It's a high, like same as like riding a big wave. It's like adrenaline high or something. Right on. I, I need you, Rick. I need you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, when you have talents and abilities in your face with that situation where you have the ability to use them and save the day that's probably one of the best feelings a lot and I can say that because what actually happened today was we were trying to find the hangout link and neither of us could find it I was eventually able to find it get the hangout link and start inviting everybody and I felt pretty good I was able to get the hangout get going on time and get everything up and running and sometimes when you have that ability to help others and you have that ability to change the day, you can really create your own positive environment. That's right. Yep, right. I agree. Because I, I couldn't find the link to get it started because I logged in as Kareem, because like we share his account for this, and I couldn't find the, the, the event link. I found the link that, that allows you to watch it as it's streaming, but I couldn't find the link to get to the panel so I could start inviting people, and oh, I was just a big mess, but whatever. Doug's I really know. popular tonight. There's two of them. There is two of them. Oh, boy. He cloned himself. Yeah, he cloned himself, yeah. Cindy, how oh. she gets along, well, she works for a mental health, I think, in, in New York City or wherever she works. Ask Cindy, man. She yeah. must work with some really different people. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Where is she? I don't know. I don't know where she is tonight. Francis, okay. you got you got the opportunity to work for Nightingale, Mr. Nightingale Conan, and I'm in or for Earl Nightingale, I should say. But what was your what was your experience like working for Nightingale, and what I'm sure you met a lot of positive people and and when you were working for him. So how, what was that like for you? It was very uh, uplifting and very. It was very beneficial. It, it just gave you a lot of tools to add to your bag of knowledge. Right on. 
That's good. Yeah. So did you did you ever get to meet Bob Proctor and Earl? You met Earl Nightingale, correct? I met Earl and I worked with Earl Nightingale, but I also met um, Dexter Yeager. Okay. Who is Dexter Yeager for people who don't Dexter know? Dexter Yeager was a big icon in Amway back in 1970, and he was the uh, one that they always uh, clamored to get in their uh, presentations when they when they had a, a big conference. They always wanted Dexter there uh, mm. to present the program to the room people and, and outline the positive aspects of what everybody could get from Amway. And he was a motivational speaker for a lot of Amway um, events. Okay. And did you really, did you enjoy being around him? Did he make you feel good? And did he help motivate you and things like that? Yes, he 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 was never condescending. Uh, I don't think, as a positive person, you can make anybody feel that you're condescending to their level. You elevate them to your level. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and I know that since I start, we started doing our show here that we've got to meet so many different people that have that same energy that we're looking for. You know, we don't have people on here who are negative, and we don't have people on here that are skeptical of entrepreneurship or anything like that because we don't want our audience to ha see that those kinds of people because we've got an audience to consider, and we wouldn't have somebody on the panel that was just negative and nasty uh, and all that other crap. So. somebody a challenge when you give somebody a challenge, much like a, a crisis patient laying on an operating table, mm -hmm. uh, you have to give them the tools to meet that challenge. Yes, absolutely. But for, I know for myself, it all started with education and uh, learning about different levels of vibrational energy and different levels of consciousness. Uh, I, I learned very, very quickly that if I'm going to be a successful entrepreneur, that I've got to be a positive person, because nobody wants to be around anyone who's negative, no matter how much money they make. It's and got nothing. Okay, Go ahead, Francis. It's okay to show that, hey, I don't know it all, but I know where to get the answers. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I have a small story I'd like to throw out there. Yeah. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Uh, there's this uh, young lady that I came across that was a relative. That she was my wife's cousin at the time, and she was very motivational to me, very motivational. I was walking on ice, and I actually didn't believe in it myself. I had a man on each arm, but, you know, I didn't have much for legs. It was glare ice, and she was standing there. Oh, you can make it. You can make another step. You can make it. And it really gave me that motivation to say, I could do it. And the lady, unfortunately, just passed away. Oh. Her name was Susan Wright. And the only reason I bring that up, because it's a very close friend, a cousin, what have you, it hurt really deep, because that was one of my, my motivational people that said, you can do it, when I didn't believe that I could do it, much like... Marsha Sortino has done in my life. She's like another Marsha Sortino, and it's a shame she passed away with Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh. But the, and at the end of it, she had to be lifted around and what have you by her brother. But her brother had compassion. He was right there lifting her and putting her into bed and taking her out of bed. And I mean, he was a driving force, and he's still my driving force. That's good. And I'm his driving force. He's another fellow Virgo, and we're like driving forces to each other. That's We're always cool. trying to challenge each other to that max, so we want, so we can reach where we want to be, mm -hmm. and that's what I believe it is. It's all about those people that make you strive harder and harder and harder, become better than what you already are. That's right. And Francis, 
you've been there a long right along that trail for me too and I, I have to uplift you on that notion Thank because you. of that reason that these are like iron walls that are there to hold me up my structure is the people that well, uh, what the positives. I for you a lot of time is break down the walls you put in front of yourself. Exactly. That's our worst nightmare, actually. Right there is our worst night nightmare is to get over ourself. Yeah. It really is. Because sometimes we get this attitude that, you know, we're invincible. Well, and we are. We are. But I can't we get, get cocky about it. You know, and it's not a good place to go on that subject matter. No. You know, you want positive lifting up people. I talked to you a number of times, and you're facing a wall, and you say, I can't get over it, I can't get through it. Uh, well, you can't go under it, so go around it. That's right, mm -hmm. exactly. Thank you, thank you. You've done that so much for me. Thank you. Yep, you can only do what you think you can do. Any further than that, you're not going to get any further because as far as you're concerned, that's as far as you can go. Minds Never are limit funny yourself. things. Never limit okay, yeah. self. Never yeah. limit self. <laughs> Say, I can do it even if I can't do it because I'll make a way. Yep. Yeah. I think that's I the really step point of any entrepreneur. Yep. Go, go. Oh, cover your mouth there, Kareem, and stop talking in your hand so we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you caught you, bro. Toastmasters 101, man. Toastmasters yeah. 101, there he is. Yeah, he's got the, the pin and everything, yet he's talking through his hand. What the hell, Kareem? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Cheryl, what, you were saying, what, you were saying you can only do what you can do, but after looking at um, some of your work, Cheryl, with Pay Me What I'm Worth, when I've been in the back office and, and I've been blogging and I've been sharing more stuff, I mean, you're working your ass off in there. And I can totally <laughs> tell that you guys, you and Rick want to get everything you can out of that course, and that really is inspirational to me because... Uh, now I'm realizing that, okay, well, if I'm going to get certified, then I damn well better be in there doing the work, too, because Soul isn't going to certify anybody that he doesn't see working for. It. Yeah, well, I figure that I'm paying for the course, and I'm taking the course. I'm going to try to get as much out of the course as I possibly can. Well, yeah. there's a lot of stuff in it I really need. I Needed all my life, you know. So I'm, I'm going for it. I, I really want to learn works, as much as I can. She works harder on it than I do. She spends uh, more time Rick. reading. Rick, Rick, going Rick, over Rick. Them and you got to get in there too, buddy. I want to hear what you have to say a lot in there too, because you've been a really big help to me too, especially when I go through tough times, and you know I can call you anytime and we can talk. And so I mean that's really important. I'm really really want to hear your thoughts on those subjects that we talk about. But um, Ron Lester's been muted because he had a lot of background noise. Ron, we want to hear what you have to say about your experience <coughs> surrounding yourself with positive people and how that's helped you in your life. He's going to have to unmute. He had a lot of background noise. There he is. It, it, it's really, it's really funny you mention Soul because I'm really good friends with Soul. I talk to him all the time. Oh, nice. That's and good. So, yeah. And, uh, so when you mention, I'm like, man, man, Soul. I, wow. Yeah. He, uh, he's helped my wife and I out and uh, several of the. Uh, she was actually doing isogenics, so she still does some of the, uh, some of the products today. And, uh, okay. Um, but, uh, and then I was helping him with a couple of, a couple of friends of his. Um, he was looking some for, for some financing, and so I was helping him with that that aspect. But uh, <laughs> anyhow, I lost track of what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, that's all right. No, I I was just asking you what what your experience has been like surrounding yourself with positive people okay. versus when you've had to remove negative toxic people from your life. Has it been a very easy decision for you when you started to realize that you wanted to own your life and own your mind? And well, it, 
Go ahead. It, it, it's really, it, it's really interesting because I've always been a positive person, um, and, and I, I always tried to stay true to that one to, uh, to the point where I actually have. Um, I'm probably many of us are familiar with this one where you've had your, when you try to talk to your family about something or another and they're like, you know, what do you really know? <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know, I got to a point where I had to tell my parents, you know, I can't. I like to surround myself with positive energy. Um, if you're if you're going to be a, a negative, I'm going to have to distance myself until until you understand where I'm going. Um, and to the point where. You know, my my fa my family actually respected the fact that I put it out there on the, out there to them like that. You know, and sometimes you have to be you, you have to be true to who you are. And in doing that, sometimes that it may seem harsh coming off to other people. But if they're going to be toxic to you, to your energy, you don't want that pollution inside inside. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That that's I couldn't agree more with that statement. I I know that I was not always a positive person, and I found that through that experience, I was attracting all kinds of friends. Yeah, they were friends, but they they were also really negative. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's a pattern here. And then the light bulb went off in my head, and and the veil lifted from my eyes. And I'm like, well, if I want a better life. And I want to, and I want to do something positive with my life, and I want to be successful, and and find my path as an entrepreneur. Then I can't be around this garbage. Yeah. And I can't be. I can't be around people who who are, uh, just cynical and skeptical and pessimistic and analyzer, analyzer, analyzer. <laughs> that that doesn't get you anywhere. Well, you know, you know a great way of a great way of really thinking about um, <laughs> positivity. Um, Think about it this way: You're in a room, uh -huh. right? Well, I hate to use this this analogy, but that's fine. Think of it in terms of flatulence. Yeah. <laughs> you can you, if you're smelling rotten, <laughs> people are going to flee, you know. Whereas if you smell better, people are going to be drawn towards you. Absolutely. Kind of a raunchy, way, kind of a raunchy way of looking at it, but it, it is so true in, all, in in just a simplistic term. I think that was a perfect analogy, actually. <laughs> I would have been a lot more graphic, <laughs> you know. But that's just me, you know. Uh, I'm a gra I can be really graphic. I'm a graphic guy, but uh, I think it's really important that people understand that. Hey, you know, no matter who your friends are, are they your friends if they're not supporting what you're doing? And the answer is no, they're not. Now, they're going to argue with you and go, well, yeah, I really care about you. And then I'm going to say, yeah, well, then shut up and prove that you care about me. And stop feeding me all this negative stuff that I don't need to hear. It Just because you're not willing to try and do something to make your life better doesn't mean you're going to pull me down your rat hole. Yep. Well, you, you know, I, I actually was working with uh, a lot of celebrities there for a while. and oh, Right on. It was really interesting um, because... Here, I, I was working in the funding aspect, trying to help them raise the funds for their films and all that. Mm -hmm. And it, can't, it it started getting to a point where, like, I would have somebody call me up out of the blue. And, and they didn't want anything other than just to have somebody just, as a friend, just give them some sort of positive reinforcement. Because, the, like they were saying, is in that, in, in, particularly in the entertainment industry, people can be brutal. I mean, yeah. it, and the worst part is... In terms of celebrities, they see themselves in the news all the time, and and so they're reading all this ne negative stuff because the press. Let's just face it, the press can be just brutal. Oh I, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't watch news or read the newspaper or listen to the radio. Yep. You know, it's you know the world wants to control your mind with fear, and and that's the way they've got so many people baited in the United States and Canada and all over the world with all this stuff that's going on with Syria and everything and yeah I'm aware of it and yeah it's tragic but you know what I'm not going to dwell on it yep because well, you know, go ahead you're absolutely right there and the worst part about that is there's so much that, so many things going on all around the world and and we know there's bad stuff going on but you know let's face it do you, we really want to sit there and think about that all the time? No, no. because if, we, if it, we, we're sitting there and dwelling on that fear, there's a heavy, there's a very 
real likelihood that we would never leave the premises. <laughs> you know, we want to be safe. Well, yeah. who the heck with that? But you know, I don't. I don't want to see it. You know, but I'm no. going to make my own reality. Yep, exactly. And that's that's how I want to live it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anybody else want to chime in? Go for it. You're all muted because we like to give people the respect to talk at one at a time. So you guys, Francis, you're going to have to unmute if you'd like to add because I had to mute you. You were talking to your caregiver there, and we could hear you, so I muted you out. Anybody else, though? Oh, go ahead, Francis. There you are. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, I didn't. That's okay. That. No, no, that's fine. But uh, yeah, I totally agree with um, what Ron was saying. That you just have to rise above what your element is around you. You just have to bring them to your level, and if you're gonna be of uh, effective help to them, then they've got to be willing to pull the sleigh with you. You know, they've got to be willing to do their part. Oh, yeah. Sure. And uh, today was one of those days where in the past 30 minutes... Uh-oh. I've got a task to do, and I can't do it. Uh, I said, you can do it, and I'm going to be here to help you, but you're going to do the work. So while I'm taking them through the task and showing them what they had to do to accomplish their task, I said, you take notes and you write down verbatim because the next time you're going to do it yourself. I'm not going to be here. I will be here, but as in their mind's eye, I wanted them to feel their own self-reliance. Okay. And who are you talking about? Because when you were explaining it, you kind of freezed up for a minute. Who are these people you're referring to? I have an uh, opportunity that I am marketing with right. about 50 other people right now, and okay. I'm holding their income online. Okay. Uh, daily they have one task to perform and there are step-by-step -step instructions. But people get lost in the instructions and if the screen that they're on doesn't look exactly as the instruction, they kind of flounder and get lost. So I just go in and hold their hand and say, you're where you need to be, and this is what you need to do. Cool. So I will tell them, go here or go there, and why they're doing it, mm -hmm. and what the objective is, and why they're performing this task, because it's required. Ah, uh, okay. And, uh, why it's required of them. Okay. So, Francis, Francis, you're the true definition of team. I tell you, you are right there for your team in, in every motivational aspect you can be. And that's exactly what it's all about. You empower people to become bigger and better than they already are. You do that. Well, that's something that you positively, just like, you know, different than a, an Anthony Robbins or a Les Brown or whatever in the way that you do that. Because you say, I'll show you once. But you better take notes because I'm not going to continually show you again and again and again and again because I don't have the time in a day to do that. But I will if I have to. I will. I will and I have to go through it ten times until they finally have their aha moment and say, oh, I can do this. Then that's, I'll do that. That's what it's all about to be a positive influence on someone, someone that stands beside you even though that you don't believe in yourself. And you've done that to me so many times. And that's just exactly what it's all about. Being an entrepreneur is other people out there are naysayers, but there's other people out there saying, you can do it. And I believe in you even if you don't believe in. And that's what I have picked up so much from this Entrepreneur Power Hour. I, I have to give the credit where it's due. 
because it gives us a chance to mastermind on subject matters that we need to be as an entrepreneur. Yep. I agree with you. Absolutely. Very well, important. Yep. Uh, I can give somebody something that is going to double their income passively every 30 days. Would you think that is a worthwhile cause? Because you can take that doubled income every 30 days and apply it to a philanthropic organization. If you're trying to feed the hungry and you have no fun for your movie or whatever, and you can simply take one small seed and deposit that and then turn around and double that seed every 30 days, would you say it's worth learning a 10-minute task? Yep, I would. Okay. Yes. Cool. Go ahead, Rick and Cheryl. Well, I'm afraid it's time for us to depart. Oh. We're going to go and do the Blues Buster thing. Okay. And Carl, I don't about that multitasking, I heard you last week. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you guys on the show. Thanks, you, Chris and Kareem. Yeah. Yes, my friend. And just a typical move. You. <laughs> Nothing wrong with I multitasking. Must, I must, I must multitask. I have to be in two places at once. I wish okay. I could be like Doug. Doug's two places at once over here. See on the screen is two Doug. Yeah, yeah, I know. Doug was three places at once. Yeah. Well, I don't have. Uh, <laughs> That's how much he's down with the power hour. He has to be there twice. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. I feel you. Well, I'm going to be on the Blues Busters too. I have to multitask to do it, but I'm <laughs> Not still very here. Like that. So I'm just well, going to be. Oh, I can't help it. I really got to be there. I just got to watch out more about muting on certain places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last time I just threw the last time I just threw the phone on the bed upside down. Oh, they won't hear anything. Yeah. Oh, they could yeah, hear. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. We'll talk to you guys later then. It's good okay, to see we'll everyone. See you class. Hello. There, man. See you tomorrow, guys. Awesome. Yep. So, Kareem, you haven't said much. What's up? I actually have been listening more than I've been talking, and I've been learning a lot more. Yeah, me too. Two ears, one mouth. But yeah. from all the insight I've got, yeah, you definitely have to surround yourself with people who have a can-do attitude. It's the same way where I work. It's the same way that I deal with people when I play music. If they have an attitude that something's impossible or they don't want to do something... It makes it very hard for the team to work. Yeah. I mean, think about me and you. If we didn't get along, how the how crazy would this show be? And uh, I don't know. It, it just wouldn't work. Surround so yourself, Chris. I hate you. <laughs> oh. Like, oh, this is real positive. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ron Lester, you're muted again. You would you like to add some more insights, my friend? Oh, I was, <laughs> yeah, I muted it uh, just for, you know, when everybody else was talking, I just mute myself. Put That's myself cool. Away. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it just, uh, sometimes they be, because I'm sitting here cooking too, so I'm talking about multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sitting there, and uh, one of the things I thought about was uh, something she had mentioned, and I, I, it dawned on me, and I've always thought this, you know, um, I, I actually put in the chat there. You can't have, you can't make a dollar without any sense, true. and that is really, really uh, uh, true in every aspect. <laughs> and that really, it really has a lot to do with how you, who you surround yourself with. You know, um, personally, that that this, I've always felt that way. You know, if you don't have the right people around you, you're not going to be able to find the. Every person is that, that penny in your life. And the more pennies that, that you have, you're going to build that solid dollar. Oh, so yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's the way teams should be. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
I agree that teams should function uh, harmoniously, and there should always be camaraderie, and there should be teamwork, and there should be a, a, a drive to succeed, because if you don't have that, then what the hell do you have? You don't have much of a team, do you? No. Well, here's a, here's another another thing that's really, really important, and you know, because one thing we got to understand as if, as if we're leading teams, we got to understand everybody's not going to come in at the same level. So, you know, some people it's going to take a lot longer. So we have to be as patient and and, and emphatic as we possibly can. You know, <laughs> because it, it's you know that that's the thing that's beautiful with people. It's meeting new people. It's like you're going to find. Um, People that aren't necessarily as bright as, as some of the other people, some other people you meet. That doesn't mean they don't have they don't have a talent that they can be uh, beneficial to the team. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's got a talent. Um, that's what that's what the U and U stands for is unique. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, you're not unique. You'll never stand out, and that. So I think that even somebody who's you know, not necessarily as bright as everybody else. He still he could be the most successful person out there because he happened to understand what made him unique and what made him stand out. And so, if we're really patient and we've helped grow his, grow his confidence in himself, he's going to be able to go yeah. anywhere he wants. That's right. And I think it's very important to keep that spirit in people. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think part of what we're doing here is allowing people to come on and show their individual qualities without saying, you have to say this, you can't say this, or saying you have to say what you, or you have to express your thoughts in this ma manner. And, we, and when we allow people to, without a few restrictions, you know, don't, no religious, no political, yeah. speak your mind, they're able to create some of the most brilliant content I've heard. And if we keep doing that, we can unite the world's entrepreneurs and we can create more great ideas. Just going to keep building and building and building. Absolutely. And you never know. And doing a show like this, you never know what nuggets of wisdom you're going to get. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's and Napoleon Hill said it best. If you want to success, if you want to succeed, you need to have, you need to have a mastermind. You need to have a group of people working with you that have the same ideas, the same beliefs. They don't necessarily have to be going in the exact same direction. You know, they have to be going in a similar direction. And I guess what I mean by that is you don't have to arrive at the same place, but you can take the same road together. And I think that that's very important to realize that, yes, you want to be around people who are on the same path, but you don't have to arrive at the exact same destination. Which means you know people could be in different businesses, but we're all entrepreneurs, so we can all help each other and we can all work together. It doesn't matter if we're in the same company or we're or if we're content marketers, network marketers, bloggers, if we're professional media entrepreneurs. That doesn't matter. All that matters is that we have a mastermind group here to bounce ideas off of, to get insight and to, and to get the charge we need to keep going. That's why we do this show, Ron, so that we can help people keep that motivation up to keep that success level as high as possible so they're vibrating at a frequency that will pull them, push them even further and make them go harder so that they can get what they want out of life. Absolutely. I have, a, I have another friend on, on, uh, that, that I met through Facebook. His name is Jared James uh, Pedersen, and he's really heavily into the vibrational um, energies. Um, to the point he's doing some sort of, he's got some sort of uh, program he's doing now where he's actually putting uh, positive uh, messages into the into the music that they're releasing, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty fascinating. Cool. Very cool. I think he's trying to reprogram his subconscious because if you program your subconscious with a lot of things that are negative and a lot of things that don't serve you, that's exactly what you're going to get. Vice versa, on the other hand, it depends how you're programming your subconscious. If you program it with a lot of good stuff, then you are going to get a lot of the desired results you want in time. It just depends how you're programming yourself. Yeah, and you know, when I'm when I'm writing content or anything like that, 
uh, I, I, a buddy of mine asked me about when I'm writing, what do I like to do to write? Um, personally, I like to have uh, instrumental music because I don't want anything with lyrics because it, it, with it, with it being instrumental, I can put it, it, I can translate things in my own thought process. Um, and so a lot of times I'll sit there and I like classical music to write to. Um, but every, I think everybody has their own methodology and uh, how they want to uh, create new content or anything like that. And mm -hmm. some of the screenwriters I wrote had, or I met that said the same thing. They they tend to go with the music that's that doesn't have any lyrics so that they can visualize things in their mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, I love music too. Um, <laughs> Especially uh, heavy metal. Uh, it's got me. It may not have. You know, everybody thinks that it has a negative message, but it really doesn't. Um, it, it's therapeutic. It's cathartic. It's artists are writing from the heart. You know, and I'm not saying all of them because there's a lot of posers out there that just write music to make money. But uh, for for me, it, it has to hit me inside, and it has to do something powerful. It has to trigger. A, a connection that I, was something I went through in life that was not the best, and that's what I get out of out of music. Is it it helps me get through the day if I'm having a bad day or if I'm not in a good mood or I'm I'm not feeling the best. I can put on some music and then I can you know get the get the energy I need from it and get the experience I'm looking for. So I also make music too. So it's yeah I understand the language of music. It's very powerful stuff. I'm a metalhead myself. Straight <laughs> on. Good. Good. Yes. Hey, commonalities. <laughs> yeah, we got commonalities because Kareem loves metal too. So. Ron will be on the power hour headbanging like, yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm a maiden yeah. head. I, I, I'm oh, Iron Maiden, right on. Yeah, Bruce Dickinson. Iron Maiden, go, yeah. Yeah, Bruce Dickinson. Man, he's been around a long time, eh, hey, Ron? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When Maiden started in the late seventies or was it early eighties? I can't uh, remember late, exactly. Late seventies. Uh, they started off with Paul Diano. Mhm. Mm I remember that. Yep. Like seventy-eight or seventy-nine. Oh, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, I think it was seventy-eight. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, seventy-eight. Okay, because I know Sabbath started in seventy. Wow, okay. another great group. Blue Black Water. Sabbath. Oh yeah, I know, I know. Um, uh, with, without Ozzy Osbourne, metal would would not exist. Period. Uh, he's considered by many to be the godfather of it, and I consider that to be true. So. Well, as a as a drummer, I was always partial to uh, Zeppelin. You know, can't okay. mess with John Bonham. No, he's <laughs> pretty good too. I know. Well, yeah. Zeppelin was excellent. Actually, speaking of positive people and metal. You wouldn't think this, and a lot of people have that stereotype, but if you go to a metal concert, there's some of the most friendly dudes there, and punk, too, yeah. which is interesting, because a lot of mainstream, like I've gone to different concerts, punk and metal have the most friendly people, and they treat you like family, and if you go down in the mosh pit, they'll help you out. And that's actually an interesting aspect from how it's characterized. Mm -hmm. I actually was at, a, at one show where... Uh, I don't know if this name or you remember this name, but Kip Winger. Oh, from I don't the know band. Who that is. Well, yeah, they were from the band Winger. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, they they were opening for uh, it was like uh, four bands, and it was uh, the headliner was Bon Jovi, Cinderella, and anyhow they had uh, somebody they had uh, a girl that was getting pressed to the front of the stage, and the guy actually he he said I'm not playing another note until you like back up so we can get this girl on stage, and they. He helped get, and he actually stopped the show right there and got her up on stage. And I just, that was kind of a, a pivotal moment in my life because just yeah. seeing somebody do that, mm -hmm. you know, taking you know, taking that care and saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, somebody's gonna get hurt, but let's, let's just put the brakes on right now. Yeah. And I thought, like, you know what, that is such a big deal. You know, how can you know? Because everybody's there to have a good show, have a good time. Yeah. Now, when somebody, there's a risk of somebody getting hurt, you know, for the, the people who say, you know, our money doesn't matter. Our fan safety, that's big. Yes. Right. That, that shows caring, and that's, that is more endearing, I think, to 
the marking of any band and their cele uh, celebrity status. Absolutely. You just need to remember how you treated your people. Yeah, exactly. Can't talk about numbers without Neil Parrott or Courtney Lang. Yeah. I, I know that when I went to Slipknot in October that it was profoundly life-changing and there were, everybody in that building, it was like a, one giant family because Slipknot's fans are so close to each other and close so close to the band that, uh, you know, it, it was amazing how many people that just loved the band as much as I do and we were all like putting our arms around each other and screaming the lyrics and headbanging and just, it was like, just felt like I was amongst people I'd known for my entire life, you know, so anybody who thinks that metal causes people to do bad things, well, first of all, I'm going to say this, if those people had negative intentions to begin with, the music had nothing to do with it, because if somebody's going to go out and they're going to shoot up a school or they're going to go out and hurt somebody, the music didn't make them do that. That was the decision they made even before anything else. So you can't, the media has to stop blaming people, or sorry, the media has to stop blaming music and video games and all that other stuff for the violence that goes on in the world because that's not what creates it. Yep. No, it's that's not what creates it. Go ahead, Doug. Nice to see you, buddy. Yeah, Here. welcome, Doug. Glad you got all your internet problems. Yeah. Out tonight. So, Doug, we've been talking about surrounding yourself with positive people and the importance of that. And I'm interested to hear from you, um, being on this show as much as you have and being in Pay Me What I'm Worth and meeting all of these wonderful people, how's that helped you and kept you motivated? Uh, anytime I'm talking with people that are motivated themselves, it keeps me motivated, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, exactly why we do this show. It's a mastermind group, and we all help each other out. We all want to keep each other motivated. But it helps, especially in times like these. I just got uh, word that my uh, hosting for for several of my websites got corrupted or, or hacked or something, and I lost all of my websites. Oh, no. Yeah, completely. That's <laughs> so. bad. Yeah. So keeping a good attitude now is a is a challenge anyway, but well, it'll all work out, buddy. It'll oh, I know it always out. does. But yeah. as you know, you're you're talking about music and uh, video games and all that stuff being, you know, when we were back in the back in the you know early '70s and early '80s, when we were you know we were the hippies back then, of course, but mm -hmm. we were all under the same thing. They said all the music, all the rock and roll music back then was destroying the world and you know, it was gonna gonna cause all these problems. Yeah. But uh, some of the, some of the most peaceful people around came out of that time. There you go. You know, and I mean, there was a lot of radical changes that happened during that time, and some of them, not all of them, were good. But uh, you can't put it on the music. There's no way. I mean, no, that's no, just no. the mu music is an outpouring of whatever the spirit of the people going on at the time is. Yes. Not the other way around. That's, that's right. right. Who knew, who knew, who knew, who knew, who knew this crazy contraptions like that? Whoa, the whoa. Boxes, boxes. <laughs> Would be uh, so transcendental for the time. <laughs> what happened, Chris? We had some echo. Yeah, I was going to say, could we do that one more time? <laughs> but that, we had an echo. I couldn't hear anything Doug was saying. All right, I'm, I'm sorry, Ron was saying. Oh, I, I was respond, responding to Doug there back in the back in those '80s. Who knew those uh, boxes and the, those contraptions would change everything the way they have today? <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. Doug, you can uh, keep going if you want. If you got anything else to say, Is he muted? No, he's unmuted. You there, Doug? He was unmuted. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Good. Good. What about you, Kareem? 
I'm actually listening at a time where I wasn't even around, so it's interesting. I, all I can say is, from my experience, music has helped me through a lot of times where I'd want to do something stupid. Then maybe I'll listen to some music, and yes, some of it might be heavy metal. And then all of a sudden, even though the problem's not solved, the music made me feel better, and I eventually worked towards a solution. As opposed to without the music, I wouldn't be such a happy person sometimes. Yeah, it's like the same way with me, man. There you go. You want to, want to uh, show your age? Who's, who was the first concert you ever saw live? Oh, boy. Uh, my first one was Metallica back in 1987 when they played here in Brandon. My uh, first was cool. Alice Cooper. All right uh, on. Probably uh, 70, uh, probably maybe 78, somewhere in that area. Very cool. Jimi Hendrix? No. Actually, it was Styx, funny enough. You went and saw Styx, did you, Chris? Yes, when I was like 16. Cool. Mine was Woodstock. You got to go to Woodstock, Francis? Which one? 1969? Woodstock. I was at the first Woodstock. I saw Janis Joplin. Yeah, that's my idol right there. That's my idol right there. Jimi Hendrix and JJ. Janis Janis. Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Blue Oyster Cult. Oh. Uh, let's see, who else was there? Cream. Joe Cocker. Cream was there. Joe Cocker, Joe Cocker was there. Cream was there. He said Cream. He didn't say yeah, Cream. Cream. He said was Cream. I know, I was cream. making a joke. I was making yeah, a joke. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's not just about rock music that influences the soul. It's not just about that. There's so many other musics. Like, personally, I get into listen to, at times, something that's easy listening. It depends on mm -hmm. my frame of mind. I, I yep. get into Christian stuff. It depends on my frame of mind. If I feel like listening to it. I have a different range of things. So it's not just that. I get into all those that you're talking about and much more like the Guess Who and Steppenwolf and Proko Harum and I mean I could go on all day because those are my ears. I actually saw the Beatles you know? over in Liverpool. What did you I say Francis? You saw the Liverpool. Beatles. You saw the Beatles in Liverpool. Wow. Awesome. Jeez, that's amazing. Yeah, I've got my cane and my gray hair, my shawl, and I'll go peacefully. <laughs> You're great, Francis. You're great. Kareem, can you take over? i got to make a quick phone call to the Walmart Vision Center, okay? Okay, have fun. Hey, great seeing you. I'll, I'll be back. You guys just no, keep he's coming back. We'll be back in black, like ACDC. Yeah, that is one of those really highly motivated. For those about to rock, we salute you. Thank you. you know, somebody, Hope he's not on the way to hell. Or the one by, or the one by Queen. You know, we are the champions. Yes. Are, so many of those songs have inspired people throughout the years. You know, to do things, to rise above. And you are yeah. right. There is some. But there is some other music that has allowed people to rise up above, depending on what they're listening to, you know, and what their frame of mind is about that music. It don't necessarily always have to be rock. I mean, yeah. I'm an old fat, so there's some old country that I get into. Maybe you might think it's nuts, <laughs> but, you know, I do what I do what I do. <laughs> and well, that's my guess who, and American Woman, and, you know, I mean, that's my era, you know. <laughs> I actually think jazz or even softer music can get people to rise above too. I mean, don't stop me now. We are the champions. Dream on exactly. is it? Aerosmith. I don't know. I think that's one that's worth mentioning, just because yeah. Aerosmith is, is pretty significant as well in those times. But to get you going, it doesn't necessarily have to be a dude with a guitar going crazy. It could be as simple as a guy just playing some jazz chords and you chilling back. Yeah, jazz is a go-to place for me if I want to mellow out. 
if I'm hyper and I'm strung out and I just feel like I'm going to self-destruct and I go to a nice mellow jazz tune, it just kind of grounds me. Now my favorites are the old story tellers. The, back in the sixties where I had James Taylor and you know Bobby yeah, Tate and King. all the yeah, guys yeah. told the stories. Yeah. Folk singers they used to call them, but uh, I always just called them poets. I always thought Neil Young was a pretty good poet then in that sense. I actually, yes. when I was picking up guitar, I started learning his songs because they were like three, four chord songs. And I had an acoustic guitar. I think I remember like learning Helpless and Heart of Gold. and I think Needle and the Damage Done I learned recently, which is interesting. But they told a lot of really good stories that you, it's hard to find that writing anymore sometimes in the newer folk in the newer country. But I really appreciate their ability to tell a good story because then people could get the emotions out of it, similar to what we're doing here. I, I see music as an, uh, another way to bring positive people and bring the positivity out of people together. Yeah, actually, I'll take, I'll take that a step through. I actually think that was, that, that kind of goes for any art because uh, you look at look at some of the best books out there. I mean, there are some ama there's some amazing literature, um, poetry. You got some just just some. If you look at some of the classic poems that are written, and it, it's it, it's just amazing to to see what they put into it, you know. And then what you get out of it is uh, equally mesmerizing. Exactly. Never been able to, never been able to do it with the painting, but <laughs> it's, some people exactly do. Exactly wrong. It's just like motivational speakers. Look at the people that has been influenced by the, the greatness of motivational speakers, speaking of that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Look at, like, a Les Brown and Anthony, I mean, Tony Robbins and, and Zig Ziglar and all those greats. Look what they have developed people into because the people that followed them programmed themselves by listening to them. And mm -hmm. music is no different. Yep. Sorry to cut you off, Ron, but I didn't, Ron, but I didn't mean to. Well, that, no, you're absolutely right. That's, uh, but I think that's, uh, it, it's really, it's really interesting in, in all the different ways that people can be touched and influenced. Um, it can be something you smell, something you see, um, but it, anything where you can feel it. The more, that's the most important thing is if you can put some sort of feeling into what whatever you're doing. Um, and you can you can relay that to people to where they understand it. Um, that's that's really the art of of, of the entrepreneurial spirit right there. Exactly. And it's the same thing with videos where people go out and they they pour their heart out into a video wrong. That, that that's what they do. They do it short, sweet, attracts attention, and it's the same thing when they go out and do that. Or an entrepreneurial power hour or a mastermind group such as this, you yeah. know, we we touch it, we rock the world doing this because of what we're bringing to the plate. Nice. Positive, powerful energy that just don't back down, and that's what it's all about. To be this motivated. Is people that share their ideas anymore. Go ahead, Doug. What did you say? I said this is one of the ways people share their ideas anymore. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you can't, if you think you can't, you yes. won't. Did I take it down on you? Sorry. That's fine, Doug. Whatever. I'll have to say that one thing the Entrepreneur Power Hour has done for me is I learned the talent of creating YouTube videos, which I was, uh, I guess, a, a covert marketer that I never I knew the power was in doing videos and it's for me to do my first video it was major stage fright but I got over it I worked through it and it's created a stronger me 
Very cool. That's Just good to hear. Pass that and learn how to use software that I never used before, and I knew I should have done it. I knew it was the next step to branding myself on the internet and even though I'm on the first page of Google and the second page of Google it would uplift my blogs and put those on the first page of Google too because your search engines look for videos and to be able to create your own YouTube channel and add videos to your own channel, it monetizes your channel. I agree. And I'm really proud of you, Francis, for you doing all that. really helped bring that out. I That's thought good. if I could go live with all my friends, when I did it, I just made believe that I was on the Power Hour and I was delivering content and it worked out. It was just outrageous the way that it turned out. That's good. So Glad we could help. Thank you all for for shoring me up. And oh, you're very welcome. Well, very I think that's the power of when you get together with people, you see, oh, this guy's making a video. He's not superhuman. He's just a regular, a regular person. And then you're inspired to make videos. Just when I saw my friends blogging, I said I could never blog. If I write down a bunch of words every day, nobody will read them. I started watching my friend Marty blog, and I started blogging. So it's definitely possible when you see others doing it or others have a speciality in doing it that you'll pick it up and do it yourself. Yeah. You know what? I think the major downfall for everybody, that, that, especially just, just getting started out, or the big thing that stops people from being successful is the, the probably the most powerful thing there is, and that is fear. Um, you know, because ten to one says most most people don't even try it because they're afraid to, to even try something new. They're afraid to get out of that comfort level. Well, if if you can get overcome that fear, you can achieve anything. There's there's nothing you can't do. That's right. That's right. And I think it's important for our viewers to know that that the best way to do something is to get started. You mm -hmm. can't sit around and wait. Yeah, I mean, it was like I saw. Skyrockets going off, and yay, celebrate me! You know, I was just thrilled that I could uh, accomplish this. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad we inspired you to, to start doing videos, Francis. That's good. Yeah, I want to inspire other people to take on maybe stuff they were afraid to. Because when me, me and Chris were talking about doing a lot of this for a long time, we we're talking about doing videos and doing Google Hangouts and making a Google Hangout series because the program we were in at the time didn't have any video and when we knew how crucial that was and we saw other marketers doing it finally when it was just me and him we decided let's start and it was just me and him for a while and I, I had a little bit of fear I was sitting there analyzing thinking oh there's no viewers we don't have a website it's just me and him or me and him and somebody else and this is really difficult is it worth it and we just kept persevering. We just kept going and going and going, even though if it was just me and him on the camera. And eventually, I just started inviting people, hang out with some cool dudes. And now, <laughs> we have a lot of different people. We've got people from Australia. We had Tibetan yogis. We had people who were professional video, people who were professional bloggers, people of all different specializations. And it's just amazing what you can do when you start hanging out with positive people and you start saying that I'm not afraid to do this. Even if no one shows up, I'll still do a hangout day in, day out. Why? Because I believe in what I'm doing. Yep, me too. Who was your biggest inspiration when you first, I mean, if you could recall really, truly inspiring you, the first when you when you were growing up, the first thing, first person you can ever think about that was, just inspired you into to thinking something different or to push the boundaries. Can you recall that? Well, I know for me it was uh, a, a lot of bands, heavy, really heavy bands like uh, Metallica and Slayer and Bathory from Sweden was another one. They're actually the first black metal band. Um, and it was always something that came from music. 
And it was always something that I heard in the music that made me go, you know, I don't have to be like everybody else. I can be myself, and I can do what I want to do, and I don't have to follow anybody. So that's what inspired me the most to be unique is is art. And I found a lot of solace in in that that in you in like I said before. So it was always music. It's always been music until. I started getting into personal development and reading books, uh, self-improvement books and stuff, and then it, it's now it's people and music, so uh, it's nice to have another source, <laughs> you know, so, and it's inspired me to do, to do this show with Kareem, you know, I'm meeting all these great people that we, we interviewed you on the radio, Ron, and now we're talking, now you're live on the Hangout, so this is, this is great. I think the first inspiration I could ever re recall, I mean, the first thing that ever truly moved me to where I felt anything, had to have been the first time I ever saw Star Wars. <laughs> oh, cool. I, you know, I was five years old, and uh, that was the first. You know, my parents took me to the theater, and that, that thing, the minute that came on the screen, that everything just changed from that point on. <laughs> it was like that's when the dream started really opened up. That's cool, man. Uh, yeah, there's been films that have inspired me, too. So, I mean, I think it can come in any form. It can take shape. But I, I was I think that one was, you know, being five years old, I think, you know, things that really open your mind and mm -hmm. really make you think, whoa, what can we do? Mm -hmm. and just to the imagination soars. I mean, sure, some, some people probably watch that movie, and it probably inspired their, their scientific side. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that it's really fascinating to think of what really hit you and what when you're a young age and you're saying, "Wow!" Oh, I agree. Yep, I agree because you can take inspiration from anything that moves you inside. It doesn't have to. It doesn't matter what it is. Oh, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. As a matter of fact, that's a great point. Um, I was out in uh, this has had to have been about '94. I was in the military at the time. And was stopping out to see my fiance, and uh, here uh, she was out in uh, Colorado, and she took me up to the mountains. And there's this lake, and nighttime, you couldn't tell where the where the sky met the met the water. It was just one of those things where you you see it, and you're just wow, wow, that's really cool. We got somebody uh, new that I'd just joined. Like yeah, I'd like to welcome Bruce uh, McKay to the. Hang out, uh, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Yes. Hi, Bruce. And our discussion tonight is, uh, where do you find your inspiration from, Bruce? Where? I'll let you explain it, there, Chris. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we're talking about surrounding yourself with positive people and the importance of that. Uh, we, but well, we've been talking about music and different things throughout the show. What? people who inspire you, things that inspire you, the importance of having positive people in your life as opposed to negative people. That's what we've been talking about tonight. He must be muted or something. Oh. Oh, I thought I heard him. Bruce? Bruce? Hey, Bruce, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, hey, okay. uh, how's it going, man? I'm good. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, we're actually getting ready to wrap it up. We start at 7:30 um, on the week on Tuesday nights, but that's fine. You know, you're here now, so yeah. We've just been talking about people, positive people in your life, and how they've helped you. So, who are some people that have been, that have kept you motivated, Bruce, and and kept you happy when you've been working hard on your goals? Have you had to remove negative people from your life? Oh yeah, um, I pretty much made it before I went online, but for 20 years I was working, you know, from 8 to 16 hour days, and I just couldn't hang out with people who were uh, drinking and partying or any stuff like that. It just mm -hmm. never worked. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't enjoy it too much either. No. Awesome. And it it hurts letting people go in a way, but you know in the end that it's not going to work for them and you. No. 
it's not. Like you can't go back and visit them, and they're getting drunk and smoking, and yeah, it just never works out. You can't yeah. go backwards. No, you got to keep going forward, man. Yeah. Yep. And I've met a lot of good people online. I have a couple of good friends like uh, like Francis. I got another woman from Bard, Texas. I talk with all the time. Very cool. And uh, she's she'll probably be joining us on MMM Global later on. But cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, guys, I got to get some food, and uh, we're going to wrap it up here. So I want to thank all of our panelists. Bruce, we'll give you a link. Uh, Francis can find you, and it will connect on Facebook. And uh, that way you can know, you know, uh, way ahead of time when the show starts. We also have a YouTube channel you can subs uh, subscribe to. And we have a website where you can go register for a newsletter so you can keep updated on when we're doing the show and what the topic's going to be about. So Kareem, okay, I'll, sounds great. Yeah, so Kareem, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody who showed up. Francis, Bruce, Rick and Cheryl, definitely Carl. Always always a pleasure, Carl. David H. Paul uh, was here, David too. H. Paul, Ron, Ron Lester. Lester. Ron <laughs> brought some great content. Definitely Doug as well. And I want to say a shout-out to all entrepreneurs of just find people who can motivate you and people who are positive influences in your life. Absolutely. As for a quick call to action, if you go to our website, theentrepreneurpowerhour.com, all one word, and you'll see a box there, and next to it will say, are you ready to change your life? And you just type in your name and your email, and you can get a newsletter with what our topic will be about, a trailer for our topic, and when it's going to be, which it's 7.30 Eastern Tuesdays. Standard on Tuesday nights. Yeah. So... And I think six, you know, p.m. Six thirty Central. Central, six thirty Central, five thirty Pacific, or four thirty. I think it is Pacific. I'm not sure exactly. But. So thank you, everyone. It was good meeting you, Bruce, and we will see you next week. Take care. Yep.